D, wait for it. Light bulb. I got the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? And welcome to my Week in Review, where I come to you every Sunday with three entertainment stories that I personally find interesting, and then we discuss them down below. Now, also down below, you can find the articles that I read to bring you this video. And you can, you know, read them for yourself, or you can just listen to this video where I'm going to read them for you. And, you know, well, I'll give you my opinion and thoughts on everything. Um, also, before I get started, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, YouTube is always changing up the algorithm on small channels like mine. We always get shoved to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe. And I thank you in advance. So now that that's all said and done, why don't we go ahead and get started uh, on this first story uh, this week. So it looks like Madam Web uh, is uh, adding to its cast. It's adding Emma Roberts. Uh, and uh, this article comes from Deadline. Um, I really like Emma Roberts. I, I think she's uh, really fun. And, uh, you know, uh, I always enjoy her when she's on the screen and everything. Uh, I really liked her in Scream uh, 4. She was super fun there. Okay, so let's get through uh, starting uh, this reading this. And it says, Emma Roberts is the latest addition to the ensemble cast of Sony Pictures' Madam Web, starring Dakota Johnson. Also on board are uh, Sydney Sweeney, uh, Calis Caliste O'Connor, uh, Isabel... Um, Merced um, and Tahar Rahim. I'm sorry if I uh, didn't uh, <laughs> pronounce those correctly. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, director S.J. Clarkson, Matt Sh uh, Shaz Shazam Shazma, and Burke uh, Sharpless uh, penned the screenplay with Karen Senga writing a previous draft. Sony had no comment on Robert's casting Monday. In the comics, Madam Webb is depicted as an elderly woman with Miss uh, with Mythosema Gravis. Gravis? I don't know what that is. And thus has connected to a life support system that looked like a spider web. Due to her age and medical condition, Madam Webb never actively fought any villains for that reason. Sources have stressed it's possible that the project could turn into something else. Insiders say that due to her psychic sensory powers, she is essentially Sony's version of Doctor Strange. Robert's role in the film is unknown. Sony is coming off of a hot streak with Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Are they really, though, making more than $500 million worldwide, while Spider-Man No Way Home has the biggest film in 2021, with $1.85 billion in world's, worldwide sales, which is very good. Um, and then it says for the last portion of it, it says uh, for Roberts, this will mark her first Marvel pick after recently wrapping production on the upcoming rom-com, Maybe I Do, which also stars uh, uh, Diane Keaton, Susan Sarandon and Richard Gere. Uh, she also continues to go uh, to be a go to for new seasons of American Horror Story. That's so true. Uh, most recently appearing in American Horror Story 1984. Roberts has also been active on the production front as she is working on developing projects she isn't necessarily starring in. One of her biggest producing uh, credits is on the Netflix series First Kill. Um, it says who she's repped by, but that doesn't matter to this story. So now who is she playing? That part, I don't know, because um, I'll be honest with you. I don't know Madam Web all that well as far as uh, characters go. Um, you know, uh, I, I most of the stuff that I know um, is from the uh, the the 90s Spider-Man TV show. Um, and that was very limited as far as that information goes now there is a younger version of madam webb that is uh you know she's not uh paralyzed and everything and she's able to uh move around and everything but even then i don't really know uh what her role is and everything um there was a storyline where it talks about like uh spider totems and stuff but that portion of the program i'll be honest with you i don't know any of that crap i really don't uh i well i know i did i do know i didn't like that storyline with the um the stuff uh with the 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 spider totems and everything and then there was like this spider verse and then there's this this group that was hunting down spider-man men 
more than one Spider-Man uh, throughout universe. Like they kill um, the Spider-Man from uh, the 1602 version. Um, yeah. So Madam Web, her powers are she's a clairvoyant and she's uh, uh, she's a, a mutant that she can uh, she's got uh, that precognitive uh, clairvoyancy kind of thing. Um, yeah. And she's very cool. Now, I uh, like I, I don't know how this movie is going to work out. They keep wanting to make these Spider-Man movies without Spider-Man. And I just go, why? I, I don't understand that process. I mean, they've got, you know. They coming out soon. They've got Craven the Hunter, and they've changed that up to where he likes animals now. And I'm all like, "What?" I'm all like, "Yeah." And, and I, my whole thing is like, I want to see my bad guys bad. Now, Madam Web isn't like a bad guy, but it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. But I want to see my bad guys bad. And if you're going to have a Spider-Man character movie, you need to have Spider-Man in it. And to not have Spider-Man is just weird to me. I just don't get it. Like Venom was good. Let There Be Carnage was not the best. I still liked it. But I honestly just felt like they could have done more. And again, not having Spider-Man in these movies is a bad choice. So that is my first story of the week. So for my second story of the week, coming from Deadline, Deadline's my favorite. Um, it looks like ne uh, Next Star uh, is in a deal, is, is working on a deal to control CW, and it's near finished. By the time this video comes out, it might be all said and done. I don't know, but as far as me... Uh, uh, recording this, they haven't uh, reached a deal just yet. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know if this is good news. I, there's, I have concerns if this goes through, and I'll tell you what those are. Let's read through this, uh, this uh, uh, article real quick, and then I'll tell you what my concerns are, okay? So it says, next star, media groups pursuit of majority control of the CW is nearing the finishing line finish line according to people with knowledge of the pending transaction word of the deal first surfaced last January but it has taken some time to iron out details as currently structured the deal will see next star take a 75 percent stake in the broadcast network and current partners uh, Paramount Global and Warner Brothers Discovery each take 12.5%. Sources indicate there is still some chances that a the tentative agreement could unravel, but if it stays on track, it could be uh, formalized in the next few weeks. The Wall Street Journal had the first uh, report of ownership structure and uh, the apparently uh, eminent closing of the acquisition. Boring. But still, let's keep going. Next are the number one owner of local TV station in the U.S., as well as the owner of cable network News Nation and digital brands like The Hill, would make a logical new owner for the CW because it already has the most uh, affiliates of the network. That's true. The more affiliates they have, the, the more people you can get your, your shows out to and everything, um, which we're going to talk about shows in a minute. While both current partners are looking, as are all media companies, the streamline uh, their, oper their operations and tighten, tighten up their balance sheets, the next star scenario is an organic way to scratch some red ink. Next Star, Paramount, and Warner Brothers Discovery declined to comment when contacted by Deadline. Created in 2006 as a way of uh, consolidating at UPN and the WB. Oh, I remember when it was called the WB and everything. And they had, a, uh, you remember that Birds of Prey show and stuff. And I remember uh, Smallville when it first started was like on the WB, Smallville and everything. Uh, that was fun. Uh, the CW has been a 50-50 venture between the various owners of CBS and Warner Brothers since then. Generating a string of shows with youth appeal like Gossip Girl, Riverdale, and All American viewership on the linear network consisted with uh, cons uh, consist consistent with that on across broadcast TV is fifty plus. But the company's free ad supported streaming app and social channels draw younger, avid audiences. 
uh, concentrated in the desirable 18 to 34 demographic. Now, I just want to say real quick, um, I think that they have created some TV shows that are definitely um, stuff people want to see and everything. But for me personally, um, it's all gone downhill, I think, uh, you know, and they haven't made, they said in another article that they haven't made any money, that it hasn't been profitable since 2006. Um, and that's when all their, you know, uh, their shows like, uh, you know, they started messing with, you know, Arrow and Flash went downhill and then Legends of Tomorrow wasn't that great. Okay, so it says uh, macroeconomic conditions have worsened considerably since the deal first became public at the start of the year with inflation skyrocketing and rising interest rates bogging down many business deals. None of those factors are expected to have a bearing on the CW transaction insider said. For one thing, there are no upfront costs for Nexstar. Instead, the company has agreed to shoulder the losses at the network, which could be north of 100 million this year okay so they're getting this the, the the cw for free but they have to take on all their debt so is it really free i think not all right let me read this last little this last little part because uh this this is all business -y, but in it's a little boring but at the same time it's so fascinating uh, the strategic plan moving forward will be to run the CW as a full sustainable broadcast network rather than optimizing it for streaming. Even though the network itself has consistently booked loss losses, the joint venture partners have made hefty profits by licensing CW shows to Netflix, sometimes agreeing to renew shows whose linear ratings did not appear to justify those re-ups. As they started to plan and a real they did they have done that with shows before the one that comes to mind and i don't think it's it's not a cw show is uh lucifer uh that show got canceled and then netflix got it and they uh you know uh they created a couple more seasons on that one. And, and I, I, I personally, I appreciated that the last couple of seasons weren't my favorite but i did appreciate them grabbing that show and then uh you know renewing it kind of thing uh which was really really nice and saving that show um, as they uh, started to plan investments in their own stream, uh, and right now I think Arrow is on uh, Netflix right now, so they're licensing that out. So, you know, they're trying to get some money. It's just going to be a little bit of a difficult stretch here. Anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, as they started to plan investments in their own streaming services, HBO Max and Paramount Plus, the current partners ended the CW output deal with Netflix in 2019. As the network made its annual upfront presentation to media buyers last month in New York City, CW chief Mark uh, Pedowitz alluded to the looming change of ownership and a time of transition. The CW announced the cancellation a significant number of shows as it re-died, uh, re uh, re re-aided, re -dated. Um, it's 2022-2023 schedule. Among uh, discounted were DC Legends of Tomorrow, Legacies, Batwoman, Naomi, Dest uh, Dynasty, Charmed, Roswell, New Mexico, uh, In the Dark, and the 4400. Now, I just want to say, in buy, in get in buying, uh, in getting for free but taking on their debt, if Next Star brings back shows like Batwoman, which are not profitable, I just go, why? Why are you doing this? Create new shows, create shows that people want to see, and that will do well in the rating slash, you know, uh, profitability. Um, I don't think that uh, I don't I don't think that I mean Next Star is doing a uh, a good thing as far as their their business plan plan goes and everything, but I just hope that after they acquire uh, the CW, I hope or gain control over it. I hope that going forward they decide to not um uh create content that's garbage that people don't want to see like they look at the ratings and they go listen no one's watching this so we need to move over to a different uh thing because the cw is free i watch all their shows on tv uh for free like i, I watch uh, uh superman and lois um i come home at night uh from work and it's on the, you know the latest episode is on a clap put that sucker on and I watch it. So I just go, you know, if it's free 
And people like, you know, Netflix, people have to sign up for and pay for. But, you know, if it's free, people are probably more likely to come to your business and uh, and and uh, watch your show. So um, I think this is good for Next Star, but I hope going forward they do, uh, you know, they do some they do some better uh, planning as far as uh, that goes than uh, uh, the CW uh, people did uh, in the past. OK, enough talk about that. All right, so moving on to our final story today. This comes comes from from Variety. Uh, Warner Warner Brothers Brothers stands by J.K. Rowling after a reporter blocked from asking a question about her. Um, That's J.K. Rowling right there. And if you don't know who J.K. Rowling is, you're you're living under a rock because she is the uh, writer, creator, and all that good things that are coming from the Harry Potter universe. All right, so let's read this article, and I will give you my thoughts about this uh, and stuff. Okay, so it says, Warner Brothers has stood by J.K. Rowling after... uh, Hold on, let me pull this back up so you can see who she is. Uh, Okay, there we go. Uh, Warner Brothers has stood by J.K. Rowling after an uh, external... PR rep acting on behalf of the studio told Sky News that the company is not connected to the author. The studio issued the response uh, following a spat between Sky News and the PR representative, who blocked <clears throat> uh, uh, who blocked the outlet from asking Harry Potter actor Tom Felton about Rowling during a press event in London last week. Felton was taking part in an event around the expansion of the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter attraction. The actor who played Draco Malfoy in the Harry Potter film franchise unveiled Professor Sprout's Greenhouse, a fan favorite set uh, from the films, which will be a permanent addition to the attraction. I want to go there so bad, but who's got money for that nonsense? You know what I'm saying? In an interview, a Sky News reporter asked Felton about Rowling, who has uh, faced backlash for comments about the trans community and who was notably absent from Return to Hogwarts, the HBO Max documentary special, making the 20th anniversary of Harry Potter. Um, You and other stars um, are still very much the face... Hold on, let me pull this down. Sorry. uh, Still very much the face of the franchise. If you, if you like, we speak to you and hear from you guys. JK obviously has sort of more of a back seat now. Is it strange for her not being around at things like this? At this point, an external PR uh, executive hired for the event who is not a Warner Brothers employee cut in and said, next question, please. When Sky News later asked the third-party PR firm why their journalist uh, was interrupted, the outlet received an email response stating, J.K. Rowling is not connected to Warner or Tom Felton. The team felt it was not relevant to the piece. In a statement shared with Variety, Warner Brothers stood by its long-standing relationship with Rowling. Uh, Warner Brothers, I think this is the last, okay. So Warner Brothers has enjoyed a creative, productive, and fulfilling partnership with J.K. Rowling for for the past 20 years. She is one of the world's most accomplished storytellers, and we are proud to to be the studio to bring her vision, characters, and stories to life now, and for decades to come. On Monday, a statement was issued by a third-party media agency that appeared contrary to this view. The statement was... Wholly wrong, and Warner Brothers Studio Tour London regrets it happened as part of a media event that day. The greenhouse expansions opens at Warner Brothers uh, Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter, on July 1st. Uh, that's tomorrow. And is part of a new feature titled Mandrakes and Magical Creatures, which will run through September 12th. Um, okay, so... I want to just say one thing. Of course, they are going to put out a thing that they stand by her because they want that IP. Uh, the Harry, listen, whether or not you like the new um, Fantastic Beasts movies is besides the point. 
Uh, Harry Potter is such a huge IP. I know that it's it's very fashionable right now to hate J.K. Rowling because of her comments about the trans community and everything. And I would suggest going and looking into that um, if you're interested. I don't want to get into it too much here, um, but I will say my thoughts as far as them separating from J.K. Rowling, um, I don't like that. Uh, you know, I mean, they're not doing it, obviously, because they said they're standing by for her uh, decades to come. But... I know a lot of people are just like, oh, she should just sell it off. I don't think so. And I did a whole video about that. You can check that out in the art card section. I won't go too much into it. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, when it comes to an artist and their art, whether I agree with their politics, a point of view that they have, whatever it is, I separate the artist from the art. So therefore, uh, no matter what I think of J.K. Rowling and her politics, I don't care. I literally give zero F-bombs about her politics and what she thinks. Um, and she's very left-leaning, but I do not care. I don't care one iota. I want to see Harry Potter, the Harry Potter product, and that's it. That's all I want to see. So, therefore, I just go, you know, um, if she, if she, you know, is is out here, you know, if, if Warner Brothers is out here wanting to, um, and and I don't think it was wrong for them to block that question. Uh, and, and Tom Felton doesn't, he could have just been like, I really don't want to talk about that right now. Um, you know, I, yeah, the, and then the reporter was not in the wrong for asking the question. I say that, uh, ask any question you want, uh, you don't have to answer it, and you can just be like, I don't want to talk about that, it's, it's too messy, I don't want to get into it. Um, but I will say this, I'm glad that they're saying they're standing, bra uh, uh, by her, only because, um, they do want that IP, and from rumors, they want to create a Harry Potter show, um, for HBO Max once all licensings and all that stuff is done everywhere else. Um, yeah, but those are my thoughts on this. Sorry, it was a tiny bit jumbled. I had notes, but I deleted them for some dumb reason and everything. Uh, but yeah. All right. Those are my thoughts and everything on all of this. Tell me, what do you guys think about all of this? How do you feel about Emma Roberts joining the cast of Madam Web? And what character do you think she's going to play? Um, I think it's very interesting that they're they're saying this is like Madam Web is their Doctor Strange. Does that mean she's going to be more magical than anything else? And who are these people playing? You know, who is uh, uh, Sydney Sweeney playing? And then who is Emma Roberts playing and these other characters? It would be interesting to see what they do there. Um, and if this will be any good, I, right now I'm going to say no, just because I mean, Madam Webb of all people. And is this just a way to, for these people to kind of shoehorn themselves into the, re, the, the MCU proper, you know, I mean, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but we'll see. And hopefully, you know, we'll get some answers sometime soon. Um, tell me also, how do you feel about next star, uh, you know, uh, c getting control over the CW? And do you think this is a good idea, a bad idea? Do you like next star? I have no idea who they are. Um, or do you think that this is, you know, uh, you know, just, just let it die. Cause it's not, none of that stuff's good anyways. I mean, for the most part, uh, uh, the CW shows are kind of trash. I mean, the only one that I personally like off the top of my head is, is Superman and Lois, and that can just go to HBO Max. I got that. So, I mean, you know, whatever. And then finally, um, how do you feel about Warner Brothers uh, standing by J.K. Rowling uh, after this reporter was blocked from asking Tom Felton a question? You know, do you... Do you think that Warner Brothers should cut all ties? I don't. I don't. I don't think they should, nor will they. I do. I definitely don't think they will because that is. Um, that's uh, you know one of their bread and butters. That's an IP that they have that's very good and can be lucrative if they do it right. I think the Fantastic B series has has faltered a little bit because they haven't taken advantage of the characters that people know and love, aka the trio. Now I know that um, lately. Um, you know, it is, like I said before, it's fashionable to hate on J.K. Rowling and the actors um, have come out and said that they won't do any more if J.K. Rowling is involved. But there's no way that you can make a Harry Potter anything without J.K. Rowling being involved. She has complete control and final say. Um, it's in her contract. She has one of the best contracts ever. Um, like they don't make contracts like this anymore. They just don't do it. 
But um, yeah, I think that this is interesting. And uh, again, I do enjoy the Harry Potter is my number one jam, if you can't tell. And I would be uh, uh, sad if they did cut ties with her, even though they won't, they won't ever cut ties. They, they, the, when, when they, like I said before, if they do Harry Potter right, they can make buco bucks, my dude. Uh, they just have to do it right. And, and they just, if they, if there's another Fantastic Beast movie, I doubt it, but if there is, they just got to sit down and be like, yo, Joe, you, you got to write a hit for us. Like the, you can't be, you can't be doing all this nonsense that you're doing in these movies and everything. All right. So that is my week in review. Tell me what you guys think about all this. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go to that like button. You know, I won't mind. If you didn't my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next week in review. You guys have a good week. Bye. Hey nerds, if you like this video, go ahead and click that Geek What icon and subscribe. And if you like this video, go ahead and join me every Sunday with my Week in Review.